exclusive coverage. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to Pennzoil at the Half. I'm Greg Gumbel. Our score at Thompson Bowling Arena at halftime, Ohio State 41, St. John's 33. Joining me, Clark Kellogg and Coach Rick Majerus. You know, I was all set to take a jab at you about those <laughs> Buckeyes, but they're playing well. Very solid game at both ends of the floor. I think the key has been their defense has been tight. They've not gotten beat off penetration. Johnson's been a presence in the middle. And then at the other end, they've turned St. John's over and been able to convert those into good baskets. Coach, you've seen some things out there you want to point out about uh, the Buckeyes. Well, the offensive play has been tempered with proper patience here. We're going to see a clip coming up. Watch them probe the zone and attack the zone. Here we see Savovich. He delivers it to Penn. Penn goes to the second side over to Red. Red back to Penn. Penn probes it with penetration, changes the ball back to Red. Red hits Savovich right here. And now watch, Johnson's a beneficiary of that and can knock that shot down because of their patience and because they stretch the defense. They've done a great job of, on offense. All right, St. John's has been averaging 15 points per halftime lead so far in the tournament. They find themselves down 41 to 33. Earlier today in Phoenix, Arizona, Gonzaga's dream came up short. The Connecticut Huskies win it 67 to 62, move on, and they will meet the winner of St. John's versus Ohio State. For complete tournament coverage with live scores, stats, and more, check out Tournament Live only at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online. Enter keyword CBS Sportsline. Well, last night, Kentucky continued their quest Along the baseline in the second half of yesterday's game, Brand himself does not consider it a major injury, and he expects to play. Thanks for watching Penn's All at the Half. Sean McDonough and Bill Raftery will be back with the second half of Ohio State against St. John's after this. Enjoy the game here on CBS as you watch Ohio State's Scooney Penn set up Michael Red for three of his game high 17 points so far. Penn's Oil at the Half has been sponsored by Penn's Oil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Penzoil. In the South Regional Final, Ohio State leads by nine. The Academic All Stars recognize one player on each team for academic excellence. For tonight's game, the All Stars are LeVar Postel of St. John's and Quajo Steele of Ohio State. We talked a lot about the unselfishness of this. St. John's team the team chemistry you can see that our test is struggling with himself and we're also seeing some body language and gestures as a group amongst themselves uh, things aren't so happy right now. Now this is the challenge for Mike Jarvis got to collectively get them together calm guys down I saw his son Mike Jr. go after Eric Barkley to discuss some things and of course the big guy has to play well Ron Artes is a second thinking on that one. Percy Thornton the contested three well defended by Brown. Haven't gotten our test many shots in the last two games. He took just five shots from the floor against Maryland. Has just four attempts tonight. Oh, he gives it up. He's unsolved. This is where they got to tee it up if they want to get back in this. Be aggressive. Check out. Maybe get a cheapie on the other end. Jason Singleton playing with three fouls for Ohio State. Well, he's on the receiving end of a great pass by Scooney Penn. And what a read. The slip by Singleton. He was the guy involved in the flare. And then the slip to the 10. Jason Singleton went past a thousand points for his career in the win over Auburn on Thursday night. And this is where he can do some damage. Pump step. Passed it out to Postel. He missed a three. Our test first to the ball. And if that's on Singleton, it's his fourth. And I think you're right, Sean. But Ohio State has been flawless on the other end. Getting good shots. Being in the right position. Here's a little screen to slip. And on the money. Penn. Well, that's what you want your point guard to do. And he's just as tough off the ball, which is what gives Red an opportunity to dominate with the bounce. Thornton missed a three. Singleton now on the bench with four fouls. George Reese is in. It's Red, Penn, Brown, Johnson, and Reese for Ohio State. The Buckeyes lead by 11. Makes the rolling hook here. There it is, and Johnson over Ron Artest. He's coming along, isn't he? Yes. He's more than a guy that can play chopsticks. And we talked to Jason Singleton yesterday. He said last year Johnson didn't even want the ball, had no confidence in his offensive game. Now you can see that he does want it. Barkley, the runner, quiets the crowd. This guy wants it, too. I mean, he'll put them on his shoulder if given the opportunity. I think he gets disgusted when things aren't going right and says, I'm the guy that's going to take over. This is a key period, I think, 
for St. John's. The next four minutes. Here we go again. Set him up. Johnson scores over our test. A little hook and a little kiss for the folks back at home. Ten for Johnson, who averages six a game. And there's a size advantage there. Johnson 6'11, our test 6'7. Barkley, nice pass to Bootsy Thornton. And a little slip maybe by Penn with the ball, but a little, they hadn't done that at all. The high pick and dive, that time good read as Barkley got between defenders. And picking up in the man to man in the backcourt. Our test, a steal. And a leak out. Postel, fouled by Brown, chance for three. The first little spark, and it came from the diamond press just over the timeline, three-quarter court. And Artest, who's playing a fraction of his ability, that time maybe a lift for St. John's, just getting in the passing lane and before going out of bounds, an assist to the other end. He had a choice. Postel, the ability, and all of a sudden, you got a little juice flowing. You got a little excitement. Mike Jarvis, Jr. on the right. And they have not had much to shout about. Brown to the bench after the foul, replaced by Savovich. Postel can't finish. He's two out of four from the line. Brown's personal foul, his second. And the lead is nine, the largest lead. Seconds ago, 13 on a couple of occasions for the Buckeyes. Would you call this a danger point for Ohio State? You know, they need a basket. I don't think they're quite there yet, but Johnson missed a little jump hook and a chance for St. John perhaps to tilt momentum in its favor. Uh, St. John scores, I think Red or Scooney will have the ball on the other end the next trip. Barkley. Jesse out to Postel. A three. They will not go away. You know that. Just by virtue of where they're from. You're right, this does become an important trip now for Ohio State. A 13 point lead quickly down to six, and Jesse called for a foul as he came over the back of George Reese. Let's take a look at the tournament summary. Connecticut, congratulations to Jim Calhoun. Finally, won't have to answer any more questions about oh. <laughs> not making it to the final four. They beat Gonzaga. St. John's trying to make it two Big East teams on the way to St. Petersburg. Now we're talking about what a great job Jim Calhoun's done all throughout his career mm -hmm. there, and there won't be that asterisk. Kick, you had him the other way, Penn. And Penn's all alone on the near side. There you go, it took a long time. And for three, every time they need a hoop, it seems he gives them one. He sure does. He's got onions and the ability to deliver. Barkley. Barkley pulled the rebound away from Johnson and missed the shot. Johnson was fouled on the arm by Barkley. Barkley needs to be careful. He waved his hand right in the face of Gene Munji. Well, that's the end of the game that he has totally got to get in control. The emotional end. The ability to kick and find people. Jimmy O'Brien has him set up to deliver. Scooney this trip for Ohio State. And Jim is sponsored by Chevrolet Trucks. Bud Light, Nike, and by the Intel Pentium 3 processor. The largest lead for Ohio State was 13. Right now, the Buckeyes lead by nine with 11 and a half remaining in just 10 days. Get ready for a new hour of comedy with the premiere of The Late Late Show with Craig Kilborn. That's the premiere after David Letterman, March 30th, right here on CBS. Anxious Lou Carnesecca and Connie Jarvis, the wife of St. John's head coach Mike Jarvis. And rightfully so, their team is not playing as they're accustomed to. Very important how they value the ball, Ohio State, and the counter. A little different look. Mike Jarvis pulling out all the stops. They were poised to trap it, backed out of it once Ohio State got it to pen over half court. And here's that little 3 2, a little flatten out, Barkley on top. You got to slip to the foul line and look. Good job, not a good pass. Thornton intercepted Reese's pass, Barkley. Oh. Whoa! 
Penn thought he had it cleanly, and that was one of those, Bill, that sounded like the whistle was blowing in anticipation of contact that perhaps did not come. I think that was a message by Penn. There was no way he was giving up on that basket, Sean. I think no question there's a body in this one, but I think this is all about you're not getting an easy one. And you can see underneath the referee can always say that it was body, but this is part wow. of the intensity, oh. the, the involvement of these two point guards. They will not back off. Barkley missed the free throw. And Scooty still coaching there, pointing to the head. And he is up in a magnificent fashion. Two personals on Penn, officially. Oh, uh, Salem Mass. <laughs> That's his hometown. Johnson, bad pass. Couple of bad passes in a row by St. John's, uh, by Ohio State big men. St. John's trying to capitalize. Postel missed the dunk off of Jesse Miss. Tartley on the floor, got the timeout before the rollover. That's one of those, get the deuce. We don't want to see all the icing. And once again, Barkley's shown. We mentioned Scooney with the ability to negate and great effort with a message. Well, this is the type of game that I've become accustomed to watching and love in Barkley. So smart, the timeout, making sure he saves the pill for his Johnnies. John Cooper and his wife Helen enjoying the action. Ohio State football coach. Monday on CBS. Find out why everybody loves Raymond. More and more people are discovering why Monday night's number one comedy is the funniest show on TV. It's Monday at 9, 8 central, right here on CBS. Now, Mike, part father, part, part philosopher, part teacher, asking his guys to trust me. And that was hard. They finally bought in. And to many of these kids, trust me meant, you know, pass the bread, here comes the baloney. But they bought in with him. For him, you get the feeling the father part is most important. We chatted with him yesterday. He said the greatest joy of his life in coaching has been Pretty. having his son as an assistant coach on the bench with him for many years. Mike Jarvis II, better known as Deuce. Artes still can't get one to go, and Scooney Penn pulled the rebound away from his teammate Savovich. Scooney at 5'10 has six rebounds. And that's what they need. They need Ron Artes to ring the bell. Nearly midway through the second half, Ohio State has had a fairly comfortable working margin throughout the second half. Penn for three. Long rebound. A tip back to Penn by Savovich. And that's one thing he does in looking at games. Savovich saves a lot. Just that little flick back, but Reese with a good slip to the post. They are decimating that zone. 16 points for Penn. When he sat out last year as a transfer in practice, he played with the walk on to beat the regulars. Numbers. Watch the lob. There it is. Oh. Blocked by Artes. Great play by Artes in the corner. They were ready for the acrobatic dunk from Red. Now a three on one. Blocked by Johnson on Postel. Barkley fouled. And he'll shoot two. And Reese didn't have to block that because he had the big guy. The Sultan of Swat in Columbus. Ken Johnson, he's strutting around there, Sean. What a magnificent <laughs> preparation here. And there's one. And right here, Reese gets in the middle, and all he had to do is let the big guy loom and do the damage. This is the third game of the tournament in which Johnson has had five blocks. He blocked five shots against Murray State, five against Detroit, one against Auburn. He had foul trouble in that game, and five more tonight. Two out of three from the line is Bartley. Two out of four. He missed the first of two. Congratulations to Kentucky Wesleyan, the Division II champions over Metropolitan State. And Connecticut on to the final four for the first time. The winner over that appealing Gonzaga team mm. that earned so many fans around the country with its performance. Dan Munson, what a wonderful job. Bartley missed both. And I think those two were attitude shown. While you were doing your homework, he strutted off to foul and he discussed on the first one. Chill, relax. Savovich with Barkley pestering him. We're approaching nine minutes left. Ohio State by 10. Red, bullet pass. Savovich, three. Oh. I'll tell you what, if you're playing against him, that's what you call him, too. Savovich. Oh, is he doing little things and now making big hoops? 
This matches the largest lead. Postel quiets the crowd with a three. 19 for Postel. He's almost single-handedly keeping the minute here in the second half. He's capable of having big games. Very patient outlook by Ohio State. Look at how they're deploying. Nice baselines and a hide man. Get a good look. And Reese missed the baseline jumper. Jim O'Brien probably wanted even a little more patience rather than have Reese take that. He's better a little bit closer to the basket. Need our test to start dominating just a little bit. His three is good. Finally, Ron Artest gets a three-pointer to go. He's one of four from beyond the arc. And all of a sudden, the lead is down to seven. And a 20-second timeout call by Ohio State. Sean, you need some good body vibes now for St. John's. I mean, mm -hmm. they have been emotionally devoid of that feeling so necessary in the NCAA. And this one, he's almost Wayne. Louis Conasek is saying a prayer upstairs. He's got the priest back on the campus. Come on, Ronnie, give us what you got. You are not playing up to your standard. Show the country. What a relief for our test. You could see him pondering the shot before he took it. Coming off a numbers game against Maryland, the point total down, but look at the rest of the stat sheet. The stat sheet stuffer, as our mm -hmm. colleague Clark Kellogg would say, seven rebounds, six block shots, which is one shy of the St. John's single game record of seven set by Robert Werdan in a game against Hofstra back in December of 89. He's all about winning, and I got the feeling, well, Barkley's going this way trying to win. Ron Artest is going that way. They got to get back into the middle, and that's why you have a guy like Mike Jarvis over there who's been able to do it all season long. With eight minutes left, Jason Singleton comes back onto the court with four fouls, and that's a travel. Penn dragged his foot as he stopped and went to pass. A little three-quarter press work. Now a full timeout. St. John's with momentum, down seven. Games to Vanderbilt and Toledo. Yeah, you're like a bad marriage. You always bring up the pass. <laughs> Postel, high arcing, three. Timeout, St. John's, 22 for LeVar Postel. And that's one response to the zone. I'm not so sure they expected it that deep. And being available, LeVar, a guy that usually does his damage either inside the three-point line or on the box, he can step out and make that kind of a shot. A little nylon stroke. Time to check the data bank. Of course, the last time St. John's was in the Final Four, there were three Big East teams there, but the 90s have been lean in Final Four appearances for the Big East. With the win today by Connecticut and their advancement to the Final Four, there's two Big East teams in the Final Four in the 90s. Syracuse, the other in 96, when the Orangemen lost to Kentucky in the championship game in the Meadowlands. Uh, Mike has done a great job in cultivating this club. They've second half shown that stick to it is to hang around. It's going to be tough now. Ohio State, see who's loose and goosey on the offensive end. I think he hit the nail right on the head yesterday. He said the teams are so similar, I think it comes down to mental toughness. And today we talked about the facial expressions, the body language, not the kind of mental toughness we've come to expect from this St. John's team exhibited today. Penn, a three. There's nobody more mentally tough than him. The vegetable man. Give me a bag of those. Oh, onions from deep. Whatever they need, he seems to provide. Scooty Penn. Suddenly Gray, a deep reserve in at crunch time here. With Barkley, our test. Grant and Postel, our test. Settling, settling. Get inside, Ron. And he spent an awful lot of time in this game on the perimeter, and it is a smaller front court for Ohio State. With the exception of Johnson, perhaps he's intimidated him with the shot blocking. Barkley fouled. Good foul by Brown, though, to make Barkley earned the two, and Barkley's hurt, grabbing at his right hip. Yeah, they have not given up on leak outs for Eric Barkley. Uh, Brown this trip, as you noted earlier, Scooney Penn. There's no way he comes out, Sean. That's how tough he is. In the open floor, you would assume you're not going to get somebody, but must have got a little knock either with a leg or an elbow. He just keeps on ticking, though. This is one of the great competitors in college basketball. And around for three more years. He's a baby. Barkley, two out of five from the line. He made the first. The foul on Brown is third. 12 points now for Barkley. 
Well, so a one and one situation now, not a factor on this one because it was a shooting foul. But they are in the bonus. And how about that company that Barkley just passed, looking for the 500th point of his freshman season? He has it. And he has set the St. John's freshman record, moving past Chris Mullen and Felipe Lopez. And pretty impressive credentials. Uh, and, and Barkley and Penn starting to get into it a little bit. So, a personal matchup. You're moving in the trap here. They've been nudging, banging one another. Under five minutes remaining for the trip to the final four in St. Petersburg on the line. Straight up, man to man. Red. This is where he likes to dominate. And he missed the shot. Reese over the back of Postel. And Reese called for the foul, his second, the team's eighth. It'll be a one and one. Tonight on CBS, it's an all new night of action beginning with early edition. Then Sam O'Hung and Arsenio Hall investigate a gang of mobsters in an all new martial law with guest star Marla Gibbs. And from the producers of Walker, Texas Rangers, Saturday night's newest drama. Sons of Thunder, America's Night of Heroes, is right here tonight on CBS. And you're my hero today, George Reese. Uh, that was a bad foul in the sense that they stopped the clock and give two freebies at the other end. You got to go behind the fleck. Don't get your body involved if you're a rebounder on the offensive end. Well, Postel's been big tonight, and he continues. So, 23 now. Sunday Gray is going to come back in. 24 for Postel. Now with Chutney Gray coming in, I think Rice is playing Christ the King tomorrow for the Catholic League Championship. Barkley's alma mater. Uh, Bobby Oliva, the coach there. Mo Hicks, the coach at Rice. Pretty solid kids coming out of those programs. 24 for Postel, a season high. The lead down to six for Ohio State. Gray right up on Penn. Hey, don't let Penn get it back and be the key for Chudney. Red still not getting many shots. A lot of contact. No whistle. Shot clock seven. Singleton. Mm, what a post entry. Two tough guys bang one another in Gray and Penn and still Scooby able to find. And Gray wincing along the far sideline as he comes into the front court for St. John's had that collision with Penn that was on call. And Brown a little too frisky up on Bootsy Thornton, and that's four on Brian Brown, an excellent on-the-ball defender. Well, you usually expect it to be physical underneath the rim, but all of a sudden they're teeing it up outside. As he tries to right himself, mm. Chunny takes some shot. And fortunately for Scooney, he stayed upright, found the post pass. Little kiss delivery uh, by Jason. I don't think we'll see anything, and hopefully we won't, to rival that collision between Mateen Cleaves and Eduardo Nahara last night. Fortunately, they both got back up and continued to play later on. Incredible, Under wasn't it? And they, they apparently the team's fine, and also Nahara. They claim they did all the tests. Mm -hmm. and they feel he's fine as well. Bootsy Thornton with a one and one. The next Ohio State foul will be two shots the rest of the way for St. John's. Bootsy has 15, two out of two now from the line. But the only thing that upset him, I think, is not having his Baltimore hat this trip, the Oriole hat. <laughs> <laughs> he has had his friend Antonio Freeman of the Green Bay Packers cheering him on. Their childhood chums from Baltimore. Under four minutes left, a seven point lead. And Ohio State demonstrating patience with the lead on the offensive end. Red. Pretty look. Oh, my goodness. Got to squeeze the pill. Squandered opportunity there for St. John's. It was touched by Johnson, but then Postel couldn't save it. Timeout in Knoxville. Ohio State by seven. Three and a half minutes remaining here in the South Regional Final in Knoxville. Tomorrow, the road to the Final Four leads to the Regional Finals beginning at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. In Game 1 in the East Regional Final from the Meadowlands, Temple takes on tournament favorite Duke. And in the nightcap from the Midwest Regional in St. Louis, defending national champion Kentucky takes on Big Ten champ Michigan State. Check local listings for the time in your area. Now the CBS Sportsline staff of the game 
Big edge for St. John's in offensive rebounds, but once again, Ohio State is surviving when being out rebounded. For complete tournament coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Shot clock a factor, red a runner, hit the side of the backboard, red again. In and out, rebound our test. And boy, they are kicked and getting that glass and attacking it. Ohio State without the rebounding, able to spread guys out and make sure the right guys handle it late in the clock. Bootsy Thornton dumped it off to our test. Our test blocked again by Johnson. He has been such a factor. Six blocks. Singleton, acrobatic score. Oh, call the chiropractor. Oh my goodness, able to hang and twist. All because of great defense by Johnson. What a presence. What a sequence. That could be the key. Two possessions back to back in the game. Johnson pops out on that hedge, gets back, always sniffing out in the lane, looks to check out. Postel a little bit deep for that three, and Scooney Penn has another rebound. His seventh. Barkley is six rebounds, all the offensive end. They can afford to use some time here. Penn so confident to give it to guys, and they'll make the right decision. Red had trouble on the dribble. They're going to foul. He's not a bad guy, too. Foul 61% from the line. But St. John's, when Johnson blocked that shot, had a chance to get closer than it had been at any time in the second half. And just look how he lingers around, too. Uh, gets that angle to deflect the basketball and generally keeps it alive. And Scooney, the draw, the dish, and oh, my goodness. Was that some hang time and maneuvering that body? Count the vertebrae. You may have lost one. 13 points for Singleton in limited playing time because he's been saddled with foul trouble again tonight. He doesn't want his career to end. Two minutes left. Gray fouls. Barkley is four, so he cannot commit another foul. Foul on Gray, his first. And that's team foul number five, so they still can give one more foul before it's the one and one. They might want to do it again. Yeah, Mike, Mike's saying to play straight up. I thought they might give it just to get in that situation. Three ball controlled by Johnson. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. 23 to shoot. They double red. He finds Johnson. They find Singleton. Bad pass. Our chest knocked it away from Johnson. Down by nine. Barkley a spin. A block by Johnson. Our test. Thornton, they know Johnson's there. This time a foul by Johnson and a chance for a three-point play. And John, what a great presence by Ron Artest on that delivery. He went in, ready to take the hit, didn't charge, deftly dished it off with the left. And just nice, this is earlier, Barkley with a great run, the recovery by Artest. And now, get to the rim. And Thornton, who does this beautifully, able to take a hit and knock it down. Three fouls on Johnson. Louie knows they needed that one. Timeout called by St. John's. It'll be a full timeout. The Red Storm down by seven with a minute and a half remaining in Knoxville. 128 remaining. Just one timeout left for St. John's. They still have one more foul to commit before they'll get to the bonus situation. The arrow in the favor of the Red Storm. Uh, philosophically, now you're going to extend the floor. I think you got to give it right away after the made free throw, Sean. And get into that position of one on one. Then, when you push the basketball, it's got to be quick hitters. Get it inside either with the dribble or the pass and go up strong. Initiate contact just to make sure the ref has to make a decision on you. Rootsy Thornton at the line trying to finish a three point play. Closest they've been in the second half is six at 53 47 with 12 23 left. And they're back within six now with 128 left. As you mentioned, Barkley can't give the foul. So somebody's going to have to, and Gray does. Good play. Smart. And they'd rather not foul Penn from now on because he is their best free throw shooter. You know, Jim O'Brien's going to do everything he can to get the ball in Scooney's hands. Well, Alan Gray is second. And so check how quick his feet are. Barkley's playing him, and he's still able to get free. Here they automatic switch. Look at him step and go. Too many people. They get the walk. Zavovich traveled right in front of the Red Storm bench, and Mike Jarvis helped with the call. So anytime you have two people in the same area, it brings 
ultimate demise. You can see easy call for the officials. Was clearly a travel. So now the Reds torn with a chance to get closer than they have been here in the second half. Bootsy Thornton looking to get it to our test. Jesse, he travels. Steps. Oh, catch and shoot. A lot of guys, you can see Louie, who's been in positions like this before. It's tougher in the stands, I think, for Louie. But right here, they, you can no question about the call. Mm -hmm. But I think they should have pried a little bit more on our test where Bootsy Thornton take the dribble into that elbow area. Brown uses the timeout. He couldn't get it in. Will it be a 20 or a full? That's the question they're asking full. Jim O'Brien. You saw him say full. 120 left. Ohio State now hanging on a bit with this six point lead. Tonight on CBS, an all new night of action beginning with early edition, then martial law, followed by Sons of Thunder from the producers of Walker, Texas Rangers. Six point game. Ohio State with a lead in the ball, a minute 20 left. Two time outs remaining for Ohio State, one for St. John's. The next foul. Will send Ohio State to the line. Get it into Penn. Rather not foul him, but they may not have a choice. Postel couldn't get there. Barkley can't foul. He has four. Our test deflected it out of bounds. And Penn went down hard. So that should, I think that was off Penn. I saw our test that came down on his body. This is a little bit of a break. And you can see oh, yeah, the hits end. his yeah. arm. He kind of he got away with one. Gave it a fling out of bounds with that arm. He thought he was fouled. He got up looking at Gene Monji looking for a foul. Brown lost it. Our test banked it off a of Buckeye. It's St. John's ball. Our test also could have let that one go because it hit Brown last there and was going out of bounds. He thought Brown might save it if All he right. didn't throw I it off so. Brown. I think you're going to let it go. You're right. Mm -hmm. uh, a case of controlling your emotions and handling. That's why Penn is to take over. This end is Barkley. One minute to go. St. John's still alive. Barkley, strong drive. No good. Postella tip. Out of bounds. It'll be St. John's ball. The officials conferred and agreed that Mike Jarvis's team will play it in. They reset the shot clock. To 35, that shouldn't be a factor. They want to shoot quickly. Our test has Johnson. He can do some damage on the drive here on the big guy. Our test does drive, and it stays down for our test. It's a four-point game. Got to get in their denial. Don't let Penn touch. Remember, Ohio State is a poor free-throw shooting team. Penn's their best at 74 percent, and he's fouled. Uh, look at that. I love that. You mentioned Jason Sigel. Did you see him run over to help out? A good giveaway by Bootsy Thornton. The crowd thought he was overzealous. Foul on Thornton is first, the team seventh, so it's a one and one for Penn. Their best free throw shooter at 74%. He was four for four from the line against Auburn. A couple of those in real pressure packed situations Thursday night. Two for two from the line tonight. Used it all. There's Scooney's mother, Allegra Penn, has made the trip from Massachusetts where she has worked on an assembly line in a GE plant for 20 years. God bless her, huh? And what a joy to see her son performing like this. And what a tough decision to leave BC. Mm -hmm. His home area, friends and teammates. Two free throws by Penn. Somehow you knew he'd make goals. Mm -hmm, no question. The push now, and he does a nice job not letting Barkley touch. Do you need a three now, Bill? I think you got to score quick. They're going to end up taking the three, I think. I'd go to the goal real fast, get set defensively. Chudney Gray, an unlikely score, gets it back down to four. The time's running out, 34 seconds left, and they foul Red quickly. Postel committed the foul, his second, the team's eighth. Red's a 61%. Free throw shooter. Executive producer of CBS Sports is Terry E. with the coordinating producer of NCAA basketball, Bob Degas. Today's game produced by Bob Monsbach, directed by Mike Arnold. Coordinating producer of the Road to the Final Four, Eric Mann, produced by Vin DeVito and David Winter, directed by Bob Matina. Here's Red at the line for a big one and one. First free throw of the game, no good. Rebound Artest. St. John's down four. Artest. 
Driving down the lane, all the way to the goal. It's a two-point game. And nobody stepped up to deny him. They got to deny now. Get it to Penn if they can, Ohio State. They get it to Reese. They should have fouled him if they had the chance. Now it's back in Penn's hands. Brown bumped hard by Gray. Right at the midpoint line with 19.2 seconds left. And that was just terrific understanding by Chundy Gray, though. You go for the steal, and you make sure there's an impact. Well, free throws down the stretch. You got to make them. But Ron Artest, who's been silenced, the ability to blow by. And look at the left-hand touch, his favorite hand, even though he is a righty. And right here, try and go for it and make sure you stop playing. As Brown gets to the free throw line, about 53%. And this is the last one and one. 19 fouls now. Any more free throws for Ohio State would be two. It rattles out. Two to tie. Three for the lead. And perhaps the trip to the final four for the Red Storm. Gray fouled by Reese. And he will shoot two. Woo. And Jimmy looks on. It's in the control of the players. You got to stop dribble penetration. They've had trouble the last couple of trips. His strong left hand. You can see Reese never gets in position. A tough match for him at that point in the game. What an unlikely player to be in the spotlight. 22nd timeout called by Ohio State. Chudney Gray, a junior from the Bronx, who had appeared in only 26 of their 36 games this year coming in. He had 10, did not play for coaches' decisions. He's a deep bench player. And for the season, a 66.7% free throw shooter doesn't go to the line much, doesn't play much. He's made 20 of 30 free throws this year. And Sean, as the year has progressed, they've gone to him a little bit to give Eric Barkley a chance to rest. He's got a good feel for what he has to do. The important aspect is if he makes them, it's a different philosophy. If he misses them, they're ready to give away the foul. If he makes two, good denial, pressure, and keep Penn out of the lane if you can. He's another young man on the St. John's team who has it in the right perspective because of the adversity in his life. He lost his mom April nine years ago to leukemia. Was raised by his grandmother Nellie Claiborne. Chudney Gray, the most important free throws of his life, some of the most important in St. John's history. Sabovich checks in. Brown goes out. Still a two-point lead, one free throw remaining for Gray. He makes it, they're going to call a timeout. He made it. It's a one-point game with 12.2 left. And a timeout called by St. John's, a full timeout. Back for the finish in a moment. Over the two pulsating regional final games. And more exciting action tonight here on CBS. Starts with early edition and martial law. Followed by Sons of Thunder all tonight. America's Night of Heroes on CBS. And still time and opportunity in this game for a hero to present himself. Here's the game reset. St. John's out of timeout. So regardless of what happens, if they're going to have a chance to shoot the tie or win, they're going to have to do it without the benefit of setting it up out of a timeout. And they get gray before it's inbounded. And uh, Mike Jarvis says it's OK. He was told that time out, don't let him catch it. He just was hanging on for dear life. The reason it's okay if you're Mike Jarvis, even move. if Penn makes both, you're only down three, and the Red Storm could tie it with a three. And no timeouts, too. No so timeouts. They, they've got they a, he, had have to go. he had to set it all up in that timeout. All these sequences now. So you got to get Barkley for the push, drive, and kick back. Two shots from the line for Penn. Four for four tonight. Eight in a row, dating back to the game. On Thursday night, and there's a miss. Gave it a chance. That's all you ever ask of a player. Singleton returns. Sanderson goes out. And Johnson's going to come back in for defense with Sabovich taking a seat. No timeouts for St. John. If it's a miss, obviously the rebounding is critical. This change, they think two all the way now. Two to tie, three perhaps for the win for St. John's in the final 10 seconds. Barkley lost it stripped by Penn red he oh, should fall yeah. and he does with 0.7 left our test rode him a long time before fouling Michael Red. and Mike Jarvis wants Eric Barkley over 
He's so despondent he was going to try and calm him down. Uh, the old mentor looking on. It's a player's game. A high pick and roll. He got caught up on a little bump as he turns the corner. Our test with the bump. And you just see that little bang defensively causes all the problems. Now Red with no teammates along the lane. He'll shoot two. 0 for 1 from the line. If he makes this one, it is certainly over. If not, St. John's has a chance for a miracle, but it'd have to be on a long heave with just seven tenths left. Catch and turn. They have a chance for a miracle. Barkley, it's offline. Ohio State goes to the final four. picture that is you if you know anything of the story of Jim O'Brien regardless of which team you are cheering for you have to be happy for him he lost his wife a few years ago at the age of 41 to a heart attack he's raised two raised two daughters by himself he left his alma mater in controversy Boston College a school he loved because of a problem with the administration moved to Ohio State where he was a stranger finished last in the Big Ten last year and one year after finishing last in the Big Ten, he's in the Final Four. The Buckeyes there for the first time since 1968. And O'Brien matched up with his longtime rival, Jim Calhoun. He runs into another former Boston coach. Calhoun won the last 18 meetings head-to-head -head when O'Brien was at Boston College. And Calhoun has been at Connecticut. The players of the game from Chevrolet are Ken Johnson. Seven block shots really affected the St. John's offense inside, and LeVar Postel kept them in it when they struggled early on. Final score, Ohio State 77, St. John 74. Stay tuned for Greg Gumbel after this message. Craig Gumbel back in New York coming up tonight here on CBS early edition followed by martial law and then Sons of Thunder that's coming your way. Let's send you back to Knoxville where Ohio State has defeated St. John's 77 74 Bill Raftery is standing by. Thank you very much Greg a, a very emotional Jim O'Brien seeing you with your daughters. What a satisfaction for you. Yeah it's a terrific win. I, I'm speechless. I'm very happy. Well you had a guy talking for you all game. You know if Scooney were on the foul line, generally you're pretty comfortable, aren't you? No, they made a furious attempt to come back. We got a little bit scattery, but we hung on, and uh, I thought we played very, very well up until the last couple of minutes. St. John's really deserves a lot of credit for the way that they came back. Fortunately, we made a play at the end. For anybody that knows you, they knew you would hang in, Jimmy. Congratulations. We got Michelle standing by. Michelle Tafoya. All right, Bill, thank you very much. I'm standing by with a very gracious Mike Jarvis. Uh, first of all, the last play, was that a foul on the steal? And just talk about the emotion of this game and why Ohio State was so tough to overcome. Well, first of all, no, there was not a foul on the last play. Uh, great players make great plays, and I think that was probably Red, who had been making big plays all day, who came up with the steal. Um, Ohio State played, um, I mean, they played a great game from the beginning to the end. Unfortunately, you know, we didn't match their intensity in the first half. But what I would like to say is that I hope that everybody at St. John's and particularly the people in New York are very proud of uh, a very courageous group of young men. Uh, I've never been prouder of a team. Uh, we had an incredible journey. We didn't get to our destination. And I hope that they'll be mature enough as I to look at it as just a fantastic journey, a gift from God. And, uh, you know, guess what? Hopefully we'll wake up tomorrow morning and uh, we'll start another journey. You've been so generous with your time. So much to build on. Congratulations on a great season. Let's send it back now to Greg Gumbel in New York. All right, Michelle, thanks very much. So Ohio State moves on. Rick Majerus, this was a heck of a game. Great game. Poised composure in the backcourt. 
and a, and a terrific set of shot selection as well as shot allocation. At St. Petersburg, Clark Kellogg, I assume we'll be wearing the scarlet and gray suit. I certainly will. Just a tremendous effort and a great story by these Buckeyes. Ken Johnson was the difference in the game in the middle. All right. We ask you to join us tomorrow here on CBS, 2 p.m. Eastern time, the road to the Final Four show. We'll have all the latest news and previews of the day's two regional championship games. And Clark and Coach Majerus will join me again here in the studio. Then the action begins on the courts at 2.40 Eastern time from East Rutherford, New Jersey, East Regional title game. Top seed Duke, number six Temple in the Midwest. Third seed Kentucky, top seed Michigan State. It all begins tomorrow here on CBS. We thank you for joining us for the coach and for Clark and for all of us here at CBS Sports. I'm Greg Gumbel. We'll see you then.